Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to four player game Sagrada, designed by Daryl Andrews and Adrian Adamescu and published by Floodgate Games. The construction of the Sagrada Familia Church began in 1882, and it still continues to this day. You and the other players will be taking on the roles of artists competing to make the most beautiful stained glass window within this magnificent structure. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, shuffle these private objective cards with a gray die on the back, and then deal one to each player. In this video, we're gonna set up a two-player game. You may always secretly look at your own private objective, but you must keep it hidden from the other players. Each player is now randomly dealt two of these double-sided window pattern cards from this shuffled deck. They'll each pick one pattern and one side and return the other to the box. The dots showing in this corner will indicate how difficult the pattern will be to work with, but the more difficult, the more of these favor tokens you'll receive, which can aid you during the game as we'll see later. At this time, now take a number of these tokens equal to those showing here. Now take any one of these window frame player boards and slide your chosen window pattern face up into the bottom of it like this. Then collect a matching score marker. Each player should put their score marker next to this round track that you should also keep nearby. These are the tool cards which you'll shuffle, dealing three face-up into the center of the playing area. Cards with this back are public objectives that you'll also shuffle and deal three face-up from. All remaining tools, objectives, and window cards can now be returned to the box. There are 90 dice included in the game, and they should be mixed into this bag, which you'll then hand to the start player. That person can be chosen randomly, or you could choose the person who most recently visited a cathedral. Either way, that's the setup. In Sagrada, players will be collecting colored dice that represent pieces of glass that they'll fit within their window as they try to create patterns that will score them points at the end of the game. The game itself is played over 10 rounds, and at the beginning of each round, the first player will draw randomly from this bag a number of dice equal to twice the number of players, plus one. So in our two-player game here, we draw five dice. These are then rolled into a central area and form the draft pool. Now, starting with the first player and going clockwise around the table, every person gets one turn. And once everyone has had a turn, that last player now takes a second one, along with everybody else, but this time going in reverse order. And on your turn, there are two different actions you can take once each and in any order, and neither are mandatory. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you how they work. One option is to select one die, and to do this, you pick one from the draft pool here and place it into any empty space of your personal window frame following some important guidelines. For example, the first die you pick must be placed into one of the spaces that go around the outside edge of your window. Then, every future die you collect must be put into a space adjacent to a previously placed die, including diagonally. So, for example, on a future turn, I couldn't go here, but I could go here, here, or here. Now, that said, the spaces themselves may have some restrictions based on the colors or symbols that you see within them. For example, if you see a red space like this, only a red die may be placed into it. Likewise, if you see a value, also known as a shade, only a die with that value showing on top may be placed there. And a white space, like this, can contain any value or color. However, no matter what color or value a space contains, a die may never be placed so that it shares a full side with a die of the same color or same value. For example, while this space could normally hold any type of die, I couldn't place either a green or value four die here because it would share a full side with this one, which is also green and also four. Matching colors or values can be placed diagonally adjacent, however, so this purple one can be diagonally adjacent to this purple one. If while playing you ever discover that a person's window breaks any of the placement rules, they must immediately remove dice of their choice from their window, returning them to the box, until all of the rules are correctly obeyed. For example, in this situation we can see we have dice of the same color and value adjacent to each other, so the player might remove this one. The other action that you can also take on your turn, if you want to, is to use one of these tool cards. And you'll do this by placing one of your favorite tokens onto an empty card and resolving its ability. 
For example, this one says that after drafting a die, you can flip it to the opposite side before placing it within your stained glass window. Now, if a tool already has favor tokens on it, you may still use it on your turn, but you'll have to spend two favor tokens to do so. In other words, when a tool is first used, it'll cost one favor, and after that, two favors each time. So those are the two actions, selecting one die and or using one tool. And you can do that in either order, and you can choose to perform only one or neither of those actions if you'd like. And after everyone has performed one turn in clockwise order and then one more turn in counterclockwise order, it's the end of the round. You now put all remaining dice from the draft pool onto the leftmost empty space of this round track. And it is possible that you might have more than one die left over if someone didn't select a die during their turn. And in that case, the leftover dice are stacked one on top of each other. The dice bag is now passed clockwise and that person will be the first player for the next round. That said, if you've just completed the 10th round, the game ends and it's time to score. First, you clear this round track and then flip it over, having players use their score markers here to keep track of their points. And if this would ever cause them to go past 50 points, they flip their token over to the 50 side and continue counting from the beginning. First, you gain one victory point for each favor token that you didn't use. For each public objective where you've completed its instructions as printed here at the bottom, you'll gain its indicated points here. And you can even score the same card more than once if you satisfy its requirements multiple times in different ways within your window. For example, you'll score six points for each row that you have that doesn't have repeating colors. So looking at our stained glass here, this would include the very top row as well as the bottom row for a total of 12 points. Now reveal your private objective and score points for it as well. This says that I sum together the values of all of the green dice within my stained glass window and add that to my total score. So in this case, 15 more points. Finally, you remove one victory point for each open space within your window. For example, if I hadn't had dice in these spaces, then I would now subtract two points from my total. Now, the person with the most points wins. And in the case of a tie, the tied player with the most points from their private objectives wins. And if still tied, check for who has the most favor tokens left. If still tied, the player seated furthest from the first player in clockwise order during that final round is the winner. The game also includes rules for solo play, but I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Sagrada. Now, if you have any questions at all about anything that you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.